Hey everybody, welcome to the workshop. On today's episode, I've been going through my house as I've been moving in, getting everything situated, and there's a lot of little things that you may not think about once you buy a house, regardless of whether it is a brand new house or whether it's an existing house, it doesn't matter. There are things that you need to consider. Now these list of things that I've come up with are things more geared towards if you're buying an existing house than a new house, but there are still things you still need to consider even if it's a new house. So today I'm going to take you along as I do some of these things and point them out so hopefully you can have these things in mind when you go to um, buy your or once you move into your house that you need to do. So stick with me today on Adam's Workshop. All right everybody, first item on the list and I think that is the most important when you first move in is changing out your door locks and your deadbolts. Now I realize you just got done spending a whole lot of hard-earned dollars to buy the house, but at least in my opinion, it is the most important thing. We just don't know who may have a key to your house, so it's just important to go ahead and change out the door locks. Now I've already made a video on how to do this, so if you want to see a see a video on it, go ahead and look it up and uh, check it out. Item two, or you might even say 1B to go along with this, and this may be just more specific to my house, but you may run into this. And what I have is a Yale door lock, deadbolt lock. And whenever the people move out, you have to then reprogram it so that way you and only you have the code to it. Now, when the sellers of this house left, they took their modem and their Nest Connect with them. So, for me, I had to buy a Nest Connect in order to connect to the Yale door lock. So, it's only about $40, and once again, I realize that we've just spent a whole lot of money, but it's probably something that's not as important as the locks and the deadbolts themselves because it's just going to be one deadbolt. But at some point in time, you're going to want to get it changed out so you have a code. So that's what I had to do by a Nest Connect, connect to it on the app, and then I was able to connect to it and change the code. So that's the second thing that I did. All right, third item on the list, and this should be the last one for this part of the safety now, is the garage door opener. Whenever you buy a house, you should be getting remotes with it, but it's always possible to program more remotes for your garage door opener. And so once again, just like the keys for your locks and deadbolts, you don't know who may have a key, you don't know who may have a uh, remote for your garage door. So most garage door openers have a way to be able to wipe out the programming and start fresh. So if you can, get the manual from the sellers. If they don't have it, or you're just not able to for whatever reason, then you should be able to go online and find that information. So clear out the memory, then go back and with just the remotes that you have, reprogram them. So now you have working remotes and if anybody else potentially had a remote, now that program has been wiped out and that remote is no good for them. So now that you've gotten the locks and deadbolts, the Yale lock if you have it, and your garage door opener, now your home should be secure and you're the only one has access to it. So, all right, the next three items on the list are going to do, have to do with the HVAC system. So, first thing is finding out the age of the HVAC unit. Mine happens to be 19 years old, so it's not very new. But regardless of the age, it's always a good idea to call up a professional and have them to service it. And which is what I did uh, already on mine, was to have it serviced. And so now I can say that it's in good shape and should be good for however long. But it is a good idea to have it serviced maybe once a year or so is always a good rule of thumb. So moving into the house, have it serviced. Second item, is on the HVAC system itself as well, is the filter. Now, whenever you take your filter out, there is a place on there for you to write the date in so you know when the filter was put in. 
some manufacturers recommend changing out the air filter about every three months. Now that's going to be up to you, but that is the recommended intervals. So whenever you go to put it in, make sure you write that date on it because let's just face it, you're going to forget and it's probably going to go over time. And then when you go to try to find out when it is and you haven't written it on there, you're going to be wishing you did. So write it on there. Even if there's not a spot on there, most of them I think have a spot on there to write the date in when you installed it. But if it doesn't, just get you a pen and write it on there anyways. And the third thing is if you have a mini split unit. I happen to have one in this house and you don't want to forget that the mini split has a little filter on it as well. It's pretty easy to clean. It's not one to really replace, but you just pop open the little door and then you have to pull it out and then you can just rinse it off. It's usually like a mesh type filter and it's no problem to get in there and actually just rinse it off and then dry it off and reinstall it and you should be good to go. Next two items on the list have to do with the refrigerator. When you come into the refrigerator, if the refrigerator has been left, then you don't know when the water filter was changed out or when the last time the ice cube tray was cleaned out. And these are important things. Don't just go into the refrigerator and wipe it all down and clean it up and say, I'm good to go. Because the more important parts, like your water filter, if you're using the water out of the refrigerator, then you're going to want it to be good. So when you go to replace it, at least with the one I have as a Whirlpool brand, and there is on the inside of the doors, you look up and there's a little sticker on there to tell you the model number. You can get online and look up the model number and it should be able to tell you what water filters you need. So that way you can buy them and replace them. And then the last thing is you really, really, really want to change out your ice and your ice maker because unless you're using a ton of ice on a regular basis, then ice will be down on the bottom of it and you're using the ice from the top and so it really doesn't get used. Well, over time that could cause maybe some bacteria to grow and that can uh, wreak havoc on, on your system. I know I've had it happen to me before. I start not feeling good because I'm, getting ice from ice machines that have never been cleaned out. So it's a good idea to go ahead and dump the ice, clean out the tray real good, and let it fill with brand new ice. I did both of these at the same time so that way I could get brand new fresh water and a fresh tray as well. The next item on the list is your smoke detectors. Now, it's always a good idea to change out, to actually replace the smoke detectors altogether. However, when we first move into a house, just like a lot of these other things, this costs money. And so uh, we might need to wait just a little bit after buying the house before we get to that. But something that is not as expensive is changing out the batteries. So they recommend, I think recommend changing the batteries about once a year or so. Um, so when we first move into a house, if you have the funds, you can go ahead and change out the entire, uh, you can change out the entire smoke detector on, in each room and plus put brand new batteries in them and that would be the optimal way. But until you get some money saved up for changing them all out, at least changing out the batteries. And don't forget on a lot of these things, like changing out the batteries and changing out the smoke detector altogether, either create you a spreadsheet, just a piece of paper, or uh, do like I do, take a small square piece of paper, write down the date on it, and then just tape it straight to it. So that way, anytime you need to know when was the last time I changed these batteries out or changed out the unit altogether, you can just go to one, look up, and say, hey, it was changed out at this date. It's time to change it out again. So make that a priority because smoke detectors are very important in a home. And speaking of smoke detectors, another thing to make sure that you have is a fire extinguisher. Because like myself, I have a gas stove and also I have my shop out here too. So having multiple fire extinguishers is a good thing because you never know when you might, regardless of whether you have gas or electric uh, for your stove, 
you never know, you may end up having a grease fire. I've had one myself. So having a fire extinguisher was extremely handy. So you never know when things are gonna happen and safety is always should be first. The next item on my list is light bulbs. Something that you may not consider right away, but in my house, I have two things. One is I have some lights that were out, like I have some under cabinet lights and I didn't realize it in the beginning, but they were out. So getting some more light bulbs so that way you can replace them. And also in my house, there was a whole lot of incandescent bulbs. I personally like LEDs because you're going from say a 60 watt bulb up to or down to say like a 13 watt bulb or maybe even an 8 watt bulb. So you're able to save a little bit of money on your electric bill. They typically will last a little bit longer and by when you go to change them out, you can just keep the ones you've got until they burn out. But me personally, I like a certain color temperature, especially too because I film in my house as well. So it gives me a good opportunity to take out the incandescent, get me some LEDs which are more energy efficient and get the correct color temperature as well. So filming can be a good thing. So that's another thing to consider when you move into a new house. The next item is something that the inspector found in my house. I actually have some uh, wall outlets that were loose. They were wiggling back and forth. And so getting those fixed was one of the things that was on my list as well. Now I have already made a video that you can go check out that uh, shows you how to take care of a loose outlet. Another important one is your crawl space vents if you have a crawl space. A lot of houses are being built on a slab nowadays. My house was built in the 80s, so it is on a crawl space. So something important here is your vents. Now, what the vent is for, if you don't know, is to help with airflow because up underneath the house, you know, you got temperature changes, humidity changes, and so you can end up with mold growth up underneath your house. So it's important to have the vents to help with circulation going through so you don't have that happen. It's also important too to make sure the vents are on there properly because if the vents fall off or come out for whatever reason, you may end up getting small animals uh, to come underneath your house, start making nests, uh, start having babies. Uh, dying underneath there, then you're going to end up with smells. So it's really important to make sure that your vents are installed correctly and they're not going to fall off. The next two items on the list are video doorbell and also programmable thermostats. As we are getting into more automated homes now, more security features for homes, if like mine you end up having these two items, it's something to keep in mind to get connected to them so that way you can have access to your front video doorbell uh, so you can see what's going on. And for your programmable thermostat, uh, you might want to program your thermostat a little bit differently than the previous owners. So getting a hold of it, getting access to it so that way you can reprogram it to your liking is something to keep in mind. And this, these two are things you don't have to purchase. A lot of the items on this list I know are things that you've got to purchase and after spending, spending money, <laughs> we don't really want to do that right away, but this is two items that you don't have to spend money on if they are something that you have. The next thing on the list is the carpets. Now, one thing that's unique to mine is the previous owners had animals and now the carpets have stains on them because of those animals they didn't get the didn't get it out now replacing the carpet is not exactly cheap and so one of the things that i'm going to do personally for mine is to pre-treat the areas and then i'm going to rent a shampooer so that way i can try to lift up some of the stains the best i can and try to help with the smell also because I know some of you out there might be allergic and but you found the right house so some of those smells are coming from stains and also maybe pet dander inside the uh, carpets so another thing to do at some point is to get your carpet shampooed. The last item on my list is checking all your um, grounds uh, one of the things that they've done in my house is a whole lot of landscaping. It's very pretty 
and I really want to work hard to take care of it to keep everything looking nice. However, there's one item that they planted, which was a weeping willow tree. And they planted it probably about two or three feet away from the wall of the house. Now this, if you don't know, can be a very bad thing. Weeping willow trees, or any tree, can grow large. To be that close to the house, it can cause, say like bugs, it can also mess up the side of your house, uh, maybe even mold growth or something like that, um, where maybe it wouldn't because now you've got that shade all the time, moisture gets trapped there. It could mess up um, the siding, brick, windows, just a whole host of problems. But the biggest problem is going to be, remember, trees grow the roots underground. You can't see them, and as they're spreading out, it is two, three feet away from your house. That's two to three feet away from your foundation. So as that tree gets big, it's going to start displacing all the ground around it. And if there's a foundation in the way, well, the tree's going to win. It's going to end up ruining your foundation. So in my case, it is not a very big tree. It's probably only about this big around. And so I wanted to get it taken care of uh, sooner rather than later before it becomes a problem. Uh, yes, I like the way it looks and it'd be nice to keep it, and if it was out much further away from the yard, then I would keep it. But in this case, I had to go ahead and chop it down, so that way I don't have that problem. Now, later on, I'm gonna come through and probably replant some bushes. Bushes are just fine because even though they spread out their roots, they are not gonna be damaging to your foundation. And so that's probably what I'll do in the future but for right now keep in mind the landscaping and make sure you don't have anything too close to the house that will damage your house all right so this was my list of things for everybody to consider once they move into a new house now this is by no means an exhaustive list obviously there is a bunch of things and every house can be a little bit unique you may have things that i don't have but there are many other things to consider and it's hard to keep up with everything because obviously when you buy in a new house there is a lot of moving parts and it is very very easy to overlook some things so hopefully this is a list of things that will help you if you are looking to move into a new house well if you found this helpful please like share and subscribe and i'll see y'all next time in the workshop